Compelling documentaries that look into the shocking crimes that hit the country. Through the eyes of people who were right at the center of the tragedies. A devil should be angry. A man took my daughter's life and ruined our family. All of a sudden, I hear this bang, bang, bang. And then he started the flailing motion as if stabbing somebody. We walked up to the dam and it's something that sticked me forever. And... Exclusive interviews, high-end drama, reconstructions and archive. Piece together the murders that shocked the nation. Crimes that shook Australia. Monday night at 8.30 on VIEW TV 6. I'm Melanie Ralph in Hong Kong and welcome to VIEW TV News. Coming up on tonight's show. Dissident Lu Xiaobo cremated this morning and Lu Xia is now free, say Chinese officials. Finance Committee meeting at LegCo descends into chaos after disqualified lawmakers barge into the meeting room. And Star Ferry raises its fares for the first time in five years, with prices going up by nearly 9%. Chinese dissident Lu Xiaobo was cremated this morning in accordance with his relatives' wishes and local customs. That's according to local authorities, who also said Lu's wife is now free. Images released by the city government show Lu Xiao and the dissident's family members standing in front of Lu's open casket. Lu Xiao, who clearly looks distressed, was comforted by her younger brother. Another picture showed her holding a picture of her husband standing next to Lu's brother, younger brother, holding the late activist's ashes. Lu's family lawyer told media he doesn't know whether the cremation was, in fact, what Lu's family wanted, because he hasn't been able to get in touch with them. Authorities, meanwhile, won't disclose Lu Xiao's whereabouts. Ms. Liu Xia is a Chinese citizen. China's relevant departments will protect her legal rights according to law. According to my understanding, Liu Xia is currently free, but she just lost her spouse. She is extremely sad. In the period after dealing with the death of Liu Xiaobo, she won't take any more outside disturbances. This is the wish of the family members. It's also natural. And one of Lu's brothers met the press just a while ago and confirmed that the dissident's ashes have been scattered at sea. During the press conference, Lu Xiaoguang praised the Chinese government for its handling of Lu's death. He said the government proposed the idea of a sea burial to the family, which the family thought was suitable. He also spoke about Lu Xia. <laughs> Ms. Losa is not able to come over in person due to her very weak condition and maybe he will just uh, receive some treatment in the hospital later because he is in, she is in great sorrow. It is a great pity, but she has entrusted me to forward her great thanks to the friends from media. Well, for more reactions, we now head to our Beijing correspondent, Dan Epstein. It was a small ceremony attended by his wife, his brother, as well as his wife's brother. And according to a statement released by the local information office, they said many of his friends were also in attendance. But if you speak to any other fellow activists who looked at pictures of the event, they'll say um, that they recognize hardly anyone there, and it's far more likely that there were plainclothed police officers. Now, this has really been the story of the last few days of Liu Xiaobo. There's been a concerted effort by the authorities here to try and um, show the outside world that they've been treating his situation with a sense of care and a sense of humanity. They've now also described his wife, Liu Xia, as being free. It's really hard to imagine what they mean by that and his former human rights lawyer Jared Genser describes that as a sick joke. Now when it comes to media coverage here of the last few days there's been next to nothing. Um, the local paper Global Times described him recently however as paranoid, naive 
and arrogant. And this is really the memory which the authorities here would like us to have of this man who others saw as a champion for freedom as well as a Nobel laureate. Well, tributes continue to pour in for Lu despite China's firm opposition to comments from other countries about the death of the dissident. Mourners in Taipei laid down flowers on an empty chair set out in Lu's honour and watched a video remembering his life. In a speech, lawmaker Yu Mei Nu said people might have to continue to fight for democracy in China while mourners expressed their admiration of Lu. I came here to mourn for Lucy Albo, who I think was an outstanding thinker and activist within the human rights and democratic movement in China. I feel very sad about his death, so that's why I stepped forward to mourn for him. Well, staying in Taiwan, where chairs, water balloons and punches were thrown in the parliament as lawmakers tried to block an infrastructure project. Members of the opposition Kuomintang party can be seen barricading the podium and setting off air horns as fights erupted between them and members of the ruling Democratic Progressive Party. The controversial project was advocated by DDP to build light rail infrastructure, flood control measures and green energy facilities. But the KMT said it favoured counties faithful to the ruling party and is aimed at gathering support for the party ahead of next year's election. Well, there were similar scenes here in Hong Kong today. A finance committee meeting at the Legislative Council descended into chaos this morning after four disqualified members tried to barge into the meeting room. It comes a day after the High Court stripped uh, Luang Kong Hung, Lu Sui Lai, Nathan Law and Edward Liu of their seats for botching their oaths at the LegCo swearing-in ceremony. They were stopped by security guards as they followed pan-Democrats, argued with pro-establishment lawmakers over the court's ruling. Committee's chairman, Chan Kim Poor, had to cut short the meeting, which was scheduled to discuss a 3.6 Hong Kong billion dollar education funding plan proposed by the chief executive. I understand the ruling yesterday to disqualify the four legislators has made pro-democracy members uncomfortable. This is part of a legal process, and I believe the four will appeal the decision through judicial means. This should not affect daily operations of the LegCo. Now, taking the Star Ferry has just got a tad more expensive. Average fares have gone up by nearly 9%. This means a journey between Central or Wan Chai to Chim Sao Choi is now $2.70 on week weekdays. On weekends and public holidays, the fare is now $3.70. Those travelling on the lower deck will pay 50 to 60 cents less per trip. It's the first hike in five years and is below the 30% rise the company had asked for. The heights are pretty reasonable. It's been a while since Star Ferry raised the fares. The service is very good and there are many tourists who take the ferry to enjoy the view, so I think the hikes won't stop people from taking the ferry. Coming up next, the latest from the world of business. Now we kick things off with a look at overnight market action on Wall Street. U.S. stocks rose as earnings season kicked off, while soft economic data spurred the advance. Julia Sun reports. The Dow and the S&P 500 hit record highs after weak economic data dulled perspectives of more interest rate hikes this year. Data showed consumer prices were unchanged in June, and retail sales fell for a second straight month. That could mean low inflation and weaker economic growth in the second quarter. Earlier this week, the market rose after Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said future rate hikes could be gradual if inflation stays low. Kevin Kelly of Recon Capital. We're in a low interest rate environment and we are going to be there for longer. So I think people are starting to understand that earnings are worth more in a low interest rate environment. It just has to do with the cost of capital. So if you're not getting returns in the bond market, you have to go somewhere else to get returns. And those returns are worth more. Three big banks kicked off the earnings seasons and they were the day's biggest drags. J.P. Morgan Chase reported a better-than-expected quarterly profit, but gave weak forecast. 
Shares of Citigroup and Wells Fargo also fell, despite reporting profits that beat analyst expectations. For the week, U.S. indices were higher. In Europe, stocks closed in the red. Staying with the U.S. economy now, and retail sales unexpectedly fell for a second straight month in June, down 0.2 percent. Now the reading points to tame inflation and soft domestic demand, diminishing prospects of a third interest rate increase from the Fed this year. However, the economy likely regains speed in the second quarter after a sluggish performance at the start of the year. Other data on Friday showed industrial production picked up in June, driven by a surge in oil and gas drilling. Global automakers have urged China to delay and soften, soften planned quotas for sales of electric and hybrid cars. They say the current proposals are impossible to meet and would cause big disruption to their businesses. David Pollard reports. Going green is going mainstream, but for foreign car makers selling or operating in China, perhaps a little too fast. American, European, Japanese and Korean car maker associations now calling on Beijing to slow the process down. China wants a fifth of all vehicle sales to be electric and hybrid by 2025, with quotas staggered from next year. In a letter to the government, the car makers say enforcement dates are impossible to meet and, if unchanged, will lead to widespread disruption of their business. They also call for equal treatment of Chinese and foreign makers who are currently excluded from full subsidies for NEVs and batteries. It is, says one analyst, little surprise given the possible intent of the quota system itself. This is a classic move by Beijing to actually ensure Chinese customers are buying Chinese purchased cars. Uh, this is very much a protectionist decision by Beijing. The ball is very much in their court. Volvo Cars is taking a bold step forward. Chinese-owned Volvo pledged this month to make all its new vehicles fully electric or hybrid by 2019, a move seen as putting it in direct competition with Elon Musk's Tesla. Elsewhere in the auto industry, and Daimler hit back at a German government committee investigating whether it had sold cars with excessive emissions. Daimler says it hasn't broken the law. The car maker was summoned for a meeting to address allegations it sold more than a million cars with excessive emissions in Europe and the US. A transport ministry official says the German Federal Motor Transport Authority was inspecting Daimler cars for possible excessive emissions. Spain's Banco Santander says it will offer perpetual bonds as part of a commercial offer to compensate some retail clients of troubled bank Banco Poplar. Poplar was taken over by Santander in June for the symbolic price of one euro after European authorities stepped in to prevent its collapse. Santander estimates the maximum cost of its initiative will be $775 million but won't hurt earnings.